Warning, this podcast contains a very angry Kim. Fuck you, Caroline. Fuck you. (laughs) (laughs) Wait. What's up, everyone, and welcome to the SCNT Podcast for the Vampire Diaries, Season 7, Episode 22, the finale, Gods and Monsters. I'm your host, Dom. With me is Mike, Red Nose, Hi. and Kim. Hi. How's it going? Eh. If I knew you were going to wear the Red Nose, I would have gone and stole the one from Mia's room. Oh. <laughs> that looks utterly absurd. <laughs> That's the point. I know. I love it. My Facebook feed all day has been filled with people, you know, pictures of people with red noses. So I'm very happy. Okay then. What would you guys Except think of this finale? <sighs> it wasn't the most wowing or mesmerizing season finale I've seen this season or from this show even. But but, but you're. Your gears are taking, and you're really interested to see what's going to happen. Yeah. That seems to be the trend for this. All the series that we're watching right now that are ending right now. That just seems to be the trend. It's like the wave of everything. It's like, okay, it didn't wow us. Because, I mean, maybe if you didn't analyze every, like, aspect of the show like we do, you may not have seen this coming, but, like... That's what we do. We're we're here to try to figure things out and piece it all together. And we're really good at putting the puzzle pieces together. Like, we, we, we start with the, the outline, right? And then we work our way in and we, we you know, we get to the middle we, or the end, whatever. But the, usually the middle is the end of the puzzle. But yeah, that's my point. Uh-huh. And we're pretty damn good at this by now that we kind of know what's coming. So yeah, there wasn't really any big shock and awe ending. We no. basically called it, or at least I did. You guys were like, "Oh, what if it's Alaric? What if it's you know?" I'm like, "Nope, we were, Damon, Damon, all the way." It Damon. wasn't. It wasn't a a. This is what we think. This is what we hope. Yeah. We were hoping for something different. We were hoping yeah. for something something out of the ordinary. Some this crazy. This is odd still different, different and out of the ordinary, because we've we weren't never... expecting a double. Yeah. Well, we're no, but I'm saying we've double. never had Damon. Even if it was just Damon, we've never had Damon as the villain. We've had Damon as like the anti-hero where he's he's playing ooh, bad bad guy, but he's still like he still had feelings for Elena the whole through all of season one. All yeah, we've even had like we've even had Stefan as the Ripper. So we've he's, we've we've yeah. even had Stefan like the good guy be bad. Yeah. Damon's always been on the fence. He's always, you know, see things as a gray area. He doesn't really give a shit. So, I mean, yes, that takes a, a big hold on his decision. So he may make bad decisions and they might seem terrible. But we've never seen him truly a villain. Like, right. he's worse than a ripper right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Enzo is his horrible, scary sidekick. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's something we didn't exactly call. That I like. I actually am going to like seeing Enzo being completely 100% evil. Mm-hmm. I mean, I... It's it's, it's the like... buddy comedy that, that we wanted back when Enzo was, like, first introduced. And by buddy comedy, yeah. I mean, like, a real, really dark buddy comedy. But, you know, it, it's this is what... When... Um, the guy from The Flash was, like, experimenting on, on Damon and Enzo... Eddie from The Flash, uh, the no. Doctor uh, in Woodmore <laughs> College. Yeah, you know, yeah. I can't, I can't unsee yeah. him as Eddie from The Flash now. But no, he was originally in the show first before he was on The Flash, and you know he was the the Doctor at Whitmore College, and he's like experimenting, and he had Enzo in a cage for like a hundred years. Not him personally, but you know, over over time, it's been passed down. He's been like the mad scientist guy. Back then, we we saw the potential between Damon and Enzo like together being evil and running around with their emotions off and doing things like that had a lot of potential there and that helped us get through like a really hard time after the whole traveler incident that was going on so Uh you know like enzo's the only good thing that really came out of that time period and i'm glad he's carried on but now to see where this is going to go with the two of them i'm really excited like i didn't end this with my jaw on the floor going oh my god like but I ended it going, 
wow, this next season is going to be interesting. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. I'm definitely. I'm on the. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Yeah. Jury's out whether it's going to be amazing, but I'm definitely going to. You know. Hmm. I feel bad for Bonnie. I feel really bad for Bonnie. Yeah. Uh, but when don't we feel bad for Bonnie? <laughs> this is true. Bonnie's gone through a lot of shit. Yeah, she's. <laughs> She doesn't have a happy time ever. They should rename this, for, you know, show from the Vampire Diaries to the Bonnie Sympathy Hour. <laughs> no, it's just it's sympathy for Bonnie because that's all it is. Yeah. Because I mean, she went almost to, to dying. She thought she was dying, and then she became, you know, the 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 had to kill her friends, which she didn't really want to do, and and that was just this. Season. It's yeah. not even like the whole season. It was just the last like four episodes. <laughs> I'm rewatching the whole show right now on on Netflix, and I'm I'm almost in season five, right? I'm like an episode away from being in season five. Bonnie's had something really shitty done to her got, at, at the end of every season, you know, maybe the exception of season one. But season one was her discovering she, she was becoming a witch, and it was like all overwhelming to her. You she know? lost one, family in season yeah, one. Yeah, she lost she her grandmother. Lost, her well, grandmother died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was and, well. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. To the vampire situation. I the thought only that was in season out. two. No, that was all season one. She lost her father in season two, I think. Three. Yeah, I think. I think your dad was. No, her dad's still on right now in like season four. All right. Her mom her... got turned in season two. Yeah, her mom. Her mom gets turned. Her dad dies in a horrible, nasty way. I mean, it's all. It's just yeah. Because continu- I'm at the point where she's like still trying to control the expression, and her father's like lashing out on it. And that's in season four. So her father. Okay, that's the season he Didn't dies. Didn't Silas yeah. kill her father? Yeah. Yeah. Like I was, horribly, yeah, it was Silas. When, it's, but, it's season it's season four, very the end of season four. Isn't that after she's already dead though? I thought she was on like the other side, and she was helpless. Or oh no, no, no! Silas yes. had everybody mind controlled. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. You he know, technically, this doesn't she's kill been himself. Dead. She's been in the spirit world. She, Bonnie's had it worse than anybody on this show. Yeah. Really? Anybody. Has. Well, that's why when Damon was, you know, talking to her, he's like, You've died and come back stronger than ever. You're, you just keep growing and nobody can stop you. Yep. Mm hmm. So, you know, and then we know that next season is going to be Cat Graham's last season. Mm-hmm. And so going into season eight, whatever whatever happens, like, whether Bonnie lives, whether Bonnie dies, it's Cat Graham's last season. That doesn't mean she won't still show up. She may come in for the series finale, you know, something like that, depending on how it goes. Even if the character dies, may still show mm-hmm. up. Mm-hmm. They, they may find some way around it. They always find ways around everything, so... Um, yeah, but we know next season is supposed to be Cat Graham's last. Um, su- rumored to possibly rumor. be Ian Summerholder's last season as well. Um, I don't and... want to watch if they're both gone. <laughs> well, I have a strong people... feeling if that is the truth, that this might they might announce sometime between the, the mid season, you know, before the next season starts. This might be the last season. No, because when when Ian announced that it was at a you know convention or whatever, and then Julie came back and like squashed that really quickly. So it seems like Ian wants to settle down with his family, you know, like his wife and maybe start a family, you know, and, and that kind of thing. So he's looking to get out of this. If that's the case, Julie wants to keep the show going. Like, she's already proven that she can keep the show, keep a spinoff running with a whole new set of characters. You can keep the show running. Yeah, it's not mm-hmm. going to be the same thing. We, we just learned that you can keep this. This whole season was focused on the void that... that uh, Elena has left behind and instead of just like vanishing and having you know her gone because the actress is gone you know Nina Dobrev's gone they focus on the void and made the void a, a thing like instead of just ignoring it and being like okay whatever let's go on about our lives and no they focused on this is what's going on without her here this is what everybody's feeling this is the absence they brought the diaries back into the vampire diaries by writing diaries to Elena you know, so everybody's uh-huh. writing diaries, right? So <laughs> you know, so in a way, the show anyone. kind of found its roots again. You know, in in a way, and I think, though maybe not as entertaining with without you know Ian, I think the show can still go on. 
Um, we've talked about it, and I said the number one thing to do is bring Chris Wood in and have Kai replace Damon for the, for the last couple seasons, you know, that the show and, runs. And, and knowing that the containment is the one and only season, and that means Chris Wood is available, I'm so happy. Yeah, because oh I've God. said it once, I've said it before. We didn't even, even get into this episode yet, but I've said it once and I've said it before that Kai has astral projection. That doesn't mean he died. Like, he mm-hmm. could have miraged that when Damon lopping he, his head it's, off. It's not, even, it's not even astral projection. He can make a copy of himself, physical copy. Yeah. So it seemed real because technically so, that was flesh. So do it. Do it, do it, do it. Um, but yeah, anyway, as far as this episode went, um, you know, we, we had the, the typical, like... Ooh, Damon doesn't get to do things the way that Damon wants to do them. No, like, oh, well, the, the kids could siphon the spell off the wall. We but, called but they, that. Yeah, but but Caroline, oh, I don't want to do that. And a lark's, uh, so Damon's going to go fucking kidnap the kids. You know, he, he hires a, a pilot, which Stefan had to call and get the pilot to leave and, you know, and let Caroline come around to her own terms to, you know, set it, which was fine and i agree that's the right thing to do but and even alaric was at first he was like no and then he was like yeah okay let's do this yeah i i was just thinking the whole time why not siphon bonnie why why do you have to siphon the the wall to like open this whole thing siphon the magic out of bonnie she's already lost like we find out at the end of this she's lost her magic anyway Right. And th- that was something that I was really con- like. Is that was something that I was concerned about, like because we knew that Reyna was kind of like an anti witch thing, yeah. And her taking on this uh-huh. ability would that you know eventually kill her because she's a witch? Would it be like counteractive? But we just find out that the Reyna stuff just took over and annihilated her powers for now. Yeah. So couldn't they have yeah. just use the siphoners to drain all the magic out of Bonnie so she wasn't a witch and she wasn't a, a supernatural vampire hunter? I'm not I entirely sure. Yeah, I don't I mean, know how it's really that. The witch part of her is genetic, so I don't know if, you know, that could have worked. But, I mean, yeah, the Reina spell, yeah, that, that could easily work, mm. I think. Hmm. Huh. Why? But the problem is, is, if that's the truth, why didn't we think about it in the first place? Why don't we just siphon Raina in the beginning? Because of the kids. No. Why wouldn't... We had other siphoners. We did have other siphoners. I don't know. Yeah, we we did. We had Nora, we had Mary Louise, we had uh, Valerie. I mean, we still had... Uh, Bo was around. So, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't get it. Maybe well, maybe they're just so scared of her because really, I mean, if they fuck up, they're dead. Yeah. Because they're yeah. arm's length. Yeah, and I love the the one thing to like slow Bonnie down the most was none other than fucking Matt Donovan. Like Matt, you yeah, actually were were worth something this episode. My like. The stars have aligned. The heavens have opened. Matt Donovan, the most useless character, was suddenly useful. <laughs> well, he, he even offered to be like, I will be with you forever and ever and stop you whenever you want to keep going. And she was like, yeah, no. I want to, but no. So he had to basically almost kill her <laughs> in order to slow her down. Yeah, I mean, you know, they, they're gaining on Stefan. There's a big traffic jam. Stefan's got to turn around and go directly at Bonnie. That's the big plan. Not cut off and try to drive through the woods or anything. You know, somehow, nice, slow, whatever, you know. But until you find a road Not or, or that something. Car. Out, I don't fucking know. <laughs> like, get out and run. You're a vampire. You could run faster than the car can drive. You know? And I don't. It's, it's so aggravating to me. And, but, you know, Matt instead, you know, swerves the car, um, shatters his leg in the process, um, which, you know, for good cause, he he saved Stefan and Caroline, um, but then, you know, he had this nice, like, touching hallucination with Penny and kind of, you know, resolved that because he never actually got to say goodbye, so that was a nice, you know, resolve for, for his character. Mm Mm-hmm. And, uh, a little touching. 
but, you know, didn't have me in tears or anything. No. I know um, there were people who did cry when yeah. I talked to them. I was like, yeah, come on. It's only Matt. <laughs> it's only Matt. <laughs> it's only Matt. <laughs> it's only Matt. <laughs> He's been You're around heartless. since the very beginning. Yeah, well, I mean, a lot of people are. He's been around since the beginning, and we're calling him useless, that he's a, a, a dumb character, and he's been there from the very beginning. We're supposed to learn to love characters that have been around forever and ever, but we don't. Mm. Mm-hmm. I still like that. I do. These, these, these are, like, over there in complete, I don't even know. I just laugh that he has gone this long without turning into something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's he's doing why pretty I love good that. that. He has turned. He's turned around and gotten the fuck out of there now. That, that is well, true. Yeah, done. Yeah. You see, yeah, you know, true. he left town. He had a cane. You notice that? Like, mm-hmm. so he didn't get any supernatural vampire healing or anything. He healed the the proper way. You know, and he's with his shattered leg. He's he's probably gonna have that cane for a while now, if not forever. I mean, he, he did. He's like, cause it was. That scene was three months after everything had happened. We, right. we, you know, we find out that Bonnie's powerless, and you know, Damon and and Enzo are leaving a string of bodies. They're trying to find him, and then he said, like, he said that he tried to help, and he did as much as he could, and that was it. And then he was leaving. He he, he was leaving. Mystic falls behind, and he was just leaving, going. Mm-hmm. He, didn't, he didn't say where, but he's going. So, do you, th- you guys think we're going to see Matt next season, or or is this it for him? Um, we haven't heard twice. anything official. Once or twice. Uh, That's it. I don't think we're going to see him like every third episode. I think we're only going to see him once or twice. To be honest, I think we're going to see more of Jeremy next season than we're going to see Matt. Really? That's what I think. I haven't heard <laughs> anything about uh, um, Stephen McQueen Steven? coming back. No, I know. Either have I. But, I mean, have we heard anything about Matt Donovan? Like, We haven't heard no? him about no. him leaving. Usually, no. when a character like that leaves, we we get it. We get a big hurrah and, uh, hurrah, and we hear, you know, oh, this person's leaving. Like we're hearing right now, you know, Cat Graham's leaving next season. Like this is her last season. We haven't heard anything about Matt. Matt's been a huge character, whether you want to admit it or not. He's been a huge character for the last seven seasons. I just don't. I don't think he's going to go out going... quiet. I don't know. I don't think he's going to be around that much at all. I mean. He actually paid, played the biggest part in this season than he ever has. That's very true. And yeah, a long time, anyway. He, yeah, I mean, that's that's why I was rooting for him. I feel like we've seen him less and less as the seasons have gone on. <laughs> hmm. You know? No, I just I don't think he's going to play a, a part basically at all. Maybe once to like carry over a small arc in the season, and that's it. I don't know. I'm really, I'm really hoping this isn't the last of Matt because I actually, despite oh, him not doing a whole last. lot, I like him. He kind of grounds the show in reality and makes you realize there's still human beings out there. I hope that you know. I still wish that it was Matt that would have got possessed and he was the big bad. That would have made such a huge mother. That would have been such an amazing twist. <sighs> that would have gave you that big. <gasps> yes, I would have been wowed by that. Even though we called it, I still would have been wowed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Could you but... imagine him and Damon teaming up? How much they hate each other? <laughs> Instead of Damon and Enzo, it would have been Damon and Matt? It would have been an interesting concept, but I would... I'm would. i going to enjoy Damon and Enzo more. Oh, well, so am I, but I'm just thinking, yeah. like... But, see, this whole time, Matt wasn't the only one that, you know, distracted Bonnie. Like, Enzo played a very good portion in it, too. Like, Enzo decides to go cook dinner. Like, puts himself at more risk than than Matt, I want to say. Because, yeah, Matt shattered his leg or whatever. But, you know, I, I don't know. It, like, you, you swerve a car to the side of the road. Maybe, you know, going at that speed, maybe you might die. But I don't, I, I feel like you wouldn't. You know, Did en- Enzo. Enzo spaghetti? Enzo, I feel like making dinner. He's Italian. Knowing that Bonnie is coming mm-hmm. into the house to kill him. Put himself at a bigger risk than Matt did. You know? I think he knew that. He knew that. And yeah. if he was going to die, he was going to die by the hands of the person he loves. And that's it's, that's exactly Enzo's frame. Like, that's his, that's how he works. We know from yeah. the very get-go, we, when we first meet Enzo, that he respects women over all else. Yeah. Like, that is, that's his shtick that you don't really get to see that often. But when you do, it's very apparent. Mm-hmm. 
And I love when Damon actually set fire to the uh, the everlasting, um, and broke the spell for Bonnie. The phone call, like between, and uh, she's like, I, "I almost just killed Enzo. Like you couldn't have done this sooner." And he goes, H- "How did he word it? Like, uh, oh damn, he's still enough. alive. Like I I, <laughs> I should have waited a little bit longer or something. You know? Yeah. Like, he's being this cocky, sarcastic self, and I loved it." Mm-hmm. So, it's just yeah and <laughs> i'm just like i can hear you <laughs> uh yeah speaking of that that scene where the phone call leads into elena elena's voice yeah his voice. now originally when watching it and i started hearing like the very first sentence i'm like oh so they cobbled together some some footage and and got you know elena's uh voice from different f- no that's not what happened no they actually called Nina Dobrev. She came down to the set and recorded her voice for for the, that was all brand new audio. Yep, which you know surprises me because I thought she was being really immature about the whole Ian summer whole summer holder you know situation that was going on on set before she left. But like to show that she could actually go back and be mature and actually do a job and you know not really not cause any drama well, and leave and. You See, know, it'd I'm still be to, amazing. I'm starting to think this whole thing with Nina is what she says it was in like a lot of interviews since she's left the show. That it's all media propaganda. That it's not true. That none of the like that's not the case. That her and Ian are actually friends, and she's happy for him. And you know, I'm starting to honestly believe that after this, you know, like there may be some truth to it in the media. Like it, that may have been the initial case of it, you know, but. I I really don't feel like she's just, like, bitter, and I don't think that's why she left the show. You know, I think she legit wanted, you know, seven years is a lot of times, a lot of years to to focus on one character. That's that's the same thing we're hearing from Claire Holt. Right. So, I mean, yeah, okay, I can can totally, I can, it's just that, you know, yeah, it is, I guess, media side. It's hard not to feed into the media propaganda. It is, it is. I guess it's easier to accept, you know, Claire Holt being like, I want to move on because we don't think she have she has family back in Australia. So it's like she ha- doesn't have like an intimate connection with anybody on the show. So we can't say, oh, she broke up with them. So they're being immature, blah, 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 mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. I mean, you just go and look and like after their breakup and stuff, you go look at like, was it the People's Choice or the Kids' Choice Awards? Where, you know, you have the two of them up on stage and they're accepting award and... You know, they're just like, you know, you would think that, you know, with the two of us accepting an award, things would be awkward because we uh, were best friends or we hate each other on the show. Then uh, we we uh, liked each other in real life. We fell in love on the show. We fell in love in real life. We broke up uh, in real life, but we're still together on the show like things would be awkward and then they just like look at each other like really awkwardly and it just like really it played off and it was a fantastic you know like little bit that they did for the show and i feel like if they if they really had such bitter and animosity and and weren't actually friends they wouldn't been a- been able to pull that off the way they did so but they're I both like really most, good actors i know but i still <laughs> feel like most of it is media propaganda yeah yeah you know at so, least some of it is. Yeah. I mean, uh, there was an interview. Uh, uh, the first website I saw it on was TVLine.com. Um, Julie Plex said, uh, in this particular case, Nina came in and did the ADR, which is short for Automated Dialogue Replacement. Uh, I reached out and said, we can either cobble it together from a bunch of episodes or you can come in and see everybody and do it ADR. She chose to do it in person, which was great because it was a nice little personal Nina visit. Uh, and then it went into, you know, uh, whether or not we're going to see Nina come back to the show full time. Uh, Nina said, or Julie Plex said, uh, uh, as for when we might see Elena again, uh, Nina is sticking to her original plan of having uh, to return just for the series finale, whatever that may be. Um, she said, it's what, I, it's what she and I kind of agreed on when we decided to move on. Uh, and it's what I've got in my head. Obviously, things can change throughout time. If the show goes on longer than we expect it to, or if we all collectively decide it would be a f- it would be fun to bring her back earlier, and she wanted to, 
but in my opinion, she was very clear about what she wanted the next step in her life to be, and she's doing a great job of achieving that. So I'm sticking with my side of the plan, which is to bring her back at the very end. So just that statement alone from Julie when she says, uh, if the show goes on longer than we expect it to, that doesn't sound like they're trying to wrap things up in season eight to me. That that no. seems like they're mm. going on. So if Cat Graham and Ian leave after season eight, Julie still seems like she wants to keep going. And I don't think that's a bad thing. Mm. You know? Like, pe- there's so many people out there that are like, this, sh- this season's not going to work without Nina. And I think this was one of their best seasons in a while. I just hope the CW gets their shit together and doesn't mess up the schedule too much so that, you know... Yeah. Either or, the fans don't really lose interest because at this point we're seeing originals in an off-season slot, and yeah. I it, because they play yeah. off each other when they air right now, I think it's really going to hurt the ratings well, for the originals. This is but this was the lowest rating rated season finale of the Vampire Diaries ever. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of that has to do with the fact that it was moved to Friday nights. It's in the Friday mm-hmm. night death slot. You know, which is, death yeah, slot. you know, famous term, you know, where they go and put shows to die. That doesn't mean they die immediately, but guess what? Next season, Vampire Diaries is still on Friday nights. You know, yeah. it didn't move. It didn't fix it. You know, nothing like that, but it's still strong for Friday night shows. You got to look at it that way. Okay. Um, and CW <laughs> does not seem like the kind of network that oh, ratings are going down a little bit. You know, we're going to cancel it. If the show was on Fox, forget about it. It would have been gone. Oh, it would have been gone three seasons ago. Yeah. At least. Four Earlier than that, ago. even. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, this is terrible. <laughs> this show's going to go as long as they want it to. And, you know, that that's going to be that. So, yeah. You know, CW is not in the habit of canceling shows. They like things to go on for a while, they like having that fan base. Yeah. So, but, uh, let's, let's get to some stuff that's going to make Kim rage. Right. Oh God. Let, let, let's talk. Let's talk about uh, Caroline. Okay. What exactly makes you rage? Okay, wait, 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 wait. Before you start. Before you start. Before you. Start, calmly. What exactly rages you? In calm. If you're if, if you're not gonna be calm, if you're not gonna be calm, you can't talk. Nope. Nope. I want to see her rage. The whole point is to she get her to rage. She did exactly what I was hoping she wouldn't do. Go back to Stefan? Yeah. Like, immediately. Yeah. Like, there was, like... Yeah. Was, there was no, like... She was so pissed off at him and didn't want to freaking talk to him. And two seconds in his presence and she forgives him. Two seconds. Two seconds. I'm two like, seconds? It was two seconds. A lot of it and had to do with... Time. A lot of it had to do with, with when she was marked by Bonnie... She realized what Stefan had to go through and how he had to walk away. And she was... She was living that. She had to walk away from a lark. She had to walk away from the kids. And she felt the pain that he was feeling when he had to walk away from her. So that kind of smoothed it over a little bit for her. And that was the main trigger. (laughs) I'm not raging about it, but I'm right here with Kim. I think she ran back to him way too quickly. Hmm. I'm not saying that she didn't. I'm just saying that... What happened with the whole getting Mark thing was one of the main reasons what changed her mind so quickly. Mm-hmm. I am. I just. I just. Uh, Alert gets the short end of the stick all oh. the fucking time. Yeah. Yes, he does. Yes, he 100%. does. And it, I. I would pick Lark over Stefan any day. Lark has died before. Personally. Mm-hmm. Lark died and then was gone for like two seasons. I would pick a lark over Stefan. Personally. Mm. Just the same. But again, if I was in Caroline's shoes and knowing that, you know, I'm going to live forever and that he's already how many years older and it already looks awkward and they're not really her kids and yes, I, I, I would stick around for the kids, but that's not a good reason to stick around. I agree. It is not mm. in, in that case you're right. It's not that is not a good enough reason. But to forgive, and, and even though she roped into the whole under, thing to mm-hmm. begin with. Yep. All right. It you never in any. Okay. So here's 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 here, let's go this whole thing. It, it just this is your PSA for the moment. Staying in a relationship because of the kids is never always a good thing right. because it can the kids can suffer from it. True. 
So I'm not I'm not against that part. I'm not against. I understand she wasn't in love with the lark. It wasn't a good enough reason to stay. The thing was, Got she it. was never not in love with the lark. Right. I'm not against that. What I am against is okay. I guess fine. She understands what Stefan went through, but Stefan still went went about it the wrong way, and she forgave him literally what a day, what a two. Oh, so now it went from two seconds to a day or two. <laughs> okay, two seconds in the retrospect of what? How long was he gone? <laughs> two years. Three. Without hardly any three three years of hardly any word. Oh that's no, that's two seconds. That's not true. She had letters that she just didn't read or didn't open because she was so pissed off at him. I mean, it was the same thing with Bonnie and and, and uh, Damon's letter. And then there was also tons of letters that S- Stefan tried to write. He just couldn't get the words out properly. I, I'm I'm not say, I'm not defending him for like not sending a letter. Even just to say I'm here, I'm sorry was enough. But he didn't even do that. But he did send postcards. But I remember one of B's arguments was, oh, he's, he's sipping Mai Tais on the beach or whatever. And it's just like, like, he's on the run 24 fucking 7. Like, if he gets a minute to sit down and breathe and relax for a second, wouldn't, wouldn't you let him take it? With his ex. Can we put that on top of the fact that he was with his ex the entire time and they were not just being friends? Oops. <laughs> oh. Oops. Oops. Wait a minute. Oops. Oh, oops. The slips just happened to fall in. Yeah, it happens. And I was naked. It happens. Because, because, because that wouldn't go all like you just walked in on, 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 on your, like, your, your significant other with another person and, oops, sorry, I just tripped and fell while I was naked. That works. Yep. I can honestly say in my life, I have never walked into the room while naked to find a naked girl there tripped and have it fall in. Well, I don't think anybody. Even the dog is totally against that. He's just like, what the fuck? You heard that? He is peed owed. And when when did we ever see them naked? I, I only remember a kiss. It was very much implied that there was there was. Stuff oh, it was implied going now. So now we're gonna oh, okay. assume. We're gonna assume they were boners Here, this whole time. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring a term back that uh, now Cleo is in love with, off screen bullshit. <laughs> it was never implied to me that there's anything more than the kiss that went on. I feel like we need visual aid for this one, but I agree with the off screen bullshit. Hmm. It was. Uh, I agree, that scene very heavily implied that they was, you know... See, I never had the feeling that they were anything more than what was shown. I, I, I knew that Valerie wanted more from it. Right. I knew that for a fact. I'm not entirely clear on the implications. Right. But I, know, I knew Valerie wanted Stefan, like, bad. I mean, I, I'm still friends with a couple of my exes, and some of which I know still want things to work out and uh, no but they know i've made it very clear no like that's not gonna happen and it's you know moved but on you spend three, but do you spend three years with them every day all the time if someone was trying to murder me and they were the only person willing to run with me yeah sure i would you don't think anything's happened within that three out three year span no Hmm. Not if I didn't want it to. I can tell you, if I was in a situation where I was running for my life, some crazy person chasing me, and if I ever stopped for more than a day, they would kill me. And the only person helping me run and keep alive was my ex. Would I be able to put aside my absolute hatred for her in order to keep alive? Okay, yes. That's Absolutely. A hundred percent, I would. Person. Well, that's Why? exactly what's going on, B. That's the exact situation Stefan's in. No, he did, Stefan, no, Stefan does not hate her. He, Stefan did never. He never hated Valerie. Well, he he dis, I mean, he didn't understand why she stood him up and all that. But then once that was all clear, you know, he they reconciled, and they reconciled before this big getaway. So I mean, so they weren't hating on each other. 
Well, I can give you the right. exact moment. The exact moment. In the episode where he leaves to go see, uh, goes to New Orleans, they have a makeout scene. They kiss before before he leaves. And she's worried about him and all this other kinds of shit. So don't give me there isn't something else going on. I didn't say... I, I acknowledged the fact that they kissed. I've said that, but I said I don't think there's anything more than that going oh. on. Oh, there, well, that was not a normal... That wasn't a little friend kiss. That was not a friend kiss. I promise yeah. you, that was not a friend kiss. That was not... No. B, do you know what friend they, kisses are? <laughs> Have you experienced them? Huh? <laughs> You're talking from experience, aren't you? B, do you have friend kisses? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> her, her face is so, so red right now. <laughs> but yeah, to continue my point, nothing would ever happen. I would sooner stop and let the supernatural force catch me and kill me. But, like, you know, like B said, they did reconcile, which, I mean... It changes things a little bit. That does change things a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Not everybody's gonna be happy about it, but it happened. Right, B? I'm just not happy with it. That she just, how quickly she forgave. Yeah. It's Caroline, though. She's impulsive. And we know yeah, this. Yeah. From the very get-go. <sighs> I feel bad for Laurie. I do, too. I mean... Yes. We all feel bad for Alaric, but we seem to come take to expect, it okay. We've come to expect that Alaric is uh, well. I think he came to be in, in a shitty seven. spot forever. Yeah, no. He's got two precious little girls. He's not in a shitty spot. Yeah, yeah that's true. Uh, he's in I that mean, case. Yeah, I mean, it's just... He just got to look at it from a different perspective. Like he's blessed right now, mm -hmm. Caroline or not. So. Wow, apparently I didn't know you you, you your friend kisses, Dom. <laughs> apparently, Especially apparently, with Mike. Apparently, Gildar said <laughs> chat saying that I have friend kisses with everybody in this podcast. Nope. No. That, nope. With Mike, all the time. With Mike? No. <laughs> no. We've experienced the beard hairs intertwining. Oh, no. God. Yeah, no. No. Can somebody explain to me how how that they? I gotta change the subject. I gotta get away from that awful, awful image. Can somebody explain to me how Damon and Enzo got out of the armory? Hmm? I'm sorry, I had to out of the cave. There's. They even said that there might be a back entrance, and it's like way in the back, and they can't find it because it's dark and crazy in there. And they're scared. I don't know. Oh. Bee's yeah. dying. <laughs> She's buzzed her last buzz. So I mean, yeah, there's got there could be a back entrance just really if, deep in there. If there was a back entrance, why did it take why did they stay in there this whole time? May, uh, okay, maybe there is no back entrance. Maybe whatever the hell took over them has some supernatural ability to teleport. And then and took them the out of there with it. it? Why the fuck was it locked? Well, it was locked in there with magic, so that makes sense. Right. If it, there's nowhere magic, it can probably just get out whenever it wants. Well, yeah, right. I guess they, they took the seal off the door and everything. Um, yeah. And then, the you know, they did in, the, that thing did inhabit two vampires, so it now has vampire strength to bust through rock and whatnot to get mm -hmm. out. But, I mean, did it inhabit them? Did it just, like, change their personality? Did I'm pretty it sure it's like a possession type deal going on. Yeah, it seemed like. I mean, and we even got to see like what the creature actually looked like for you know a bit of it. We did. Yeah, what the hell is it? We saw when like a just grabbed a brief, Enzo. Like a, a oh, shot right. of his arm grabbing Enzo. Yeah. I still think it's related to whatever grabbed Catherine. Catherine was just sucked off into the void. We didn't even see anything. Mm. No, I know, but, you know, that's an open door that they left open. I think they're going to connect it somehow. Hmm. It'd be interesting. Uh, it definitely still does not have a name. And I think that's going to be part of the mystery going into next season. It's like, what exactly is it? 
The creature in the armory is a mysterious and powerful device. I don't even think the people in the armory knew its name. I don't think they knew anything about it. They just knew to keep it locked up. That it's old and it's evil. Maybe mm-hmm. it's the equivalent of this, you know, universe's devil or something. Nah. It's going to be interesting, that's for sure. I it's, agree. There, there's a lot of stuff, you know, going in. It's like, okay, is Matt coming back? You know, what the hell is uh, Stefan and Enzo going to do? You know, now that they've gone, you know, three months missing and now, or three months they've gone without a trace and then all of a sudden 60 people go missing. You know, and then you see him at the end in the warehouse, like stringing these guys up and guys and girls hanging up on the ceiling upside down and they're just kind of like laughing and smirking and all this stuff. It wasn't an all of a sudden thing. They said they they tracked a few bodies in the first few weeks and then all of a sudden the body it just kept multiplying and then all of a sudden the count was 60. Mm. And that's where the big leads came in. They like, oh, it's some place in New York Eastern Seaboard or something. Yeah, I saw it too, B. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you saw, and I don't want to see it. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's pretty much the episode. Yeah. We can go on forever and, and speculate what might happen. And still, like, wish Return that of Kai. thing. <laughs> exactly. Return of the Kai. They're going to need Kai to back. siphon the ever, whatever, the, the poltergeist out of, out of Damon and Enza. If it's an entity, I don't know if it can yeah, be sucked out. I don't think it's going to work like that. No. But this is also going to be really interesting to see Cat Graham's exit, possibly Ian's exit. Um, I hope you, she changes guys, her mind. I don't think she's going to. Um, but do you guys think they're going to kill the character off, or do you think they're going to send her away? To be honest, I think they're going to leave that an open door. I yeah. think I know the reason why she wants to move on is because she does have a singing career and it's not taking off the way she wants it because of the Vampire Diaries. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think they're gonna, you know, send her off because obviously they can't bring Elena back. Right? If they're gonna kill, her, if they're gonna kill bon- Bonnie off, they better have Elena ready to come back, which is not the case. Obviously, you read that before. She's coming back for the very end, and that's the plan so far. Right. So they can, unless they can drag that out too, though, like they can kill Bonnie, and when Stevan and Damon go to wake Elena up out of you know her casket, the casket's missing, and then you know like that's the end of season eight. Like, uh oh, where where's Elena's casket? And then that we have like, like a, a little, where's Waldo? Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Like, then going for season thing is, nine. I- I don't want another, you know, Elena-centric season when Elena's not in it. As much as I hate Elena, if they're going, if they're going to talk about Elena all the goddamn time, please let her be there, because then I can actually target my rage. Right now, she's not there; she's a void, and they're all they're doing is going <laughs> Elena, and it's just like I, you know, shut up. But I can't actually be mad at something. So let her just, you know, walk away. You know, maybe she walks away powerless. You know, know. whatever. I think think having the casket missing entirely is is very interesting. I think it would make a good, you know, like, who took it? But, like, you... It's, who took it? Where is it? They're going to be looking for it. They're yeah. going to be looking for Elena but the whole time. They're going to be looking like, for th- the big bad. What if it was Kai this whole time? You're not going to be upset if Kai's the one that stole Elena and had her casket. You wouldn't find that out until, like, near the end of the season. You that might whole find it out right up. away, and he's just not going to tell him where it is. I, I still, it, they're still going to be trying to find her, trying to get her back. It just seems stupid to me because she's not. It, it'll be like this season where she's there, but she's not there, and everybody's whining about her, whining to her, even though she's not there. You're whining it, about I don't her. Like it? <sighs> whiny, 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 whiny. Because it's a stupid idea. <laughs> You're stupid. <laughs> the look on Beast's face, like, oh no, you did not just tell her that. <laughs> like, okay, so she, like, calmed down so I wouldn't be, like, super raging. And I wasn't super raging, and I explained my whole situation. Now you're just, you're just, like, amping her to get pissed off. 
That's all you're doing. Like, I know you're how to push buttons. Camping. That's my job. <laughs> so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, anything else uh, before we go into next season? Nope. No? All right, well, that is it. Mike, where can the people find your beard entanglement? Oh, God, <laughs> why? You could find me not doing that on Twitter, at Philodrin, right there. <laughs> also, Draven in chat. <laughs> Uh, get on with it. You're killing me now. <laughs> Nikki, where can the people find your love for Elena? No, you can't find my love for Elena on Twitter at LadyVenom24. I'll take you Y V E N O M24. B, where can people find your dating advice for Stefan? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> you really should do that. Just tweet at him after well, this. Well, like, what is it? What is it? It's Matthew Davis. You can come see me. You don't. You don't need Caroline. Fuck that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we, we went. We anyway. went from. We went from Paul Wesley to to uh, to Matt Davis. So Alara, hit her up. We need a new. We need a new like everything. You're, every every. B, you're gonna make Elijah jealous. Oh, I know. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Gillies, hit her up too. <laughs> Maybe we get some beard entanglement going between you and and <laughs> never mind. Go ahead, B, where can the people find you? Oh god, I'm done. <laughs> Alright, uh, uh no, the Twitter is at uh um at H U M I T I This just got awful. This whole is just awful. This is bad. Uh, you can find me down below at Phenomenon, P-H-E-N-O-M-E-D-O-M. -E you can find all of us and more on Facebook, Gmail, G+, Twitter, <coughs> and right here on YouTube at Sledge Azo TV Podcast for some more podcasts, podcasts for some of your favorite TV shows, movies, and games. Until next season. <laughs> See you guys later. This is all. <laughs> I, I gotta go shave my beard. Yeah, <laughs> please, everybody, go shave your beards. We don't want any entanglements happening. Oh, there will be much beard trimming tomorrow. Apparently, apparently, beard hentai is, is now the... <sighs> the awkward silence! <laughs>